My name is Oliver Picard, and I've always dreamed of building my own car, together with my aerospace engineer and rallyist dad, Andrew. Hello. I found the perfect project. This is my Cox GTM. The remains of one of only 800 made. And that looks bad, but when you look at it from the inside, it's even worse. Crashed, fire damaged, rusted, unrestorable. We aren't just modifying, but completely re-engineering. We aren't just bolting on parts, we are making the tools that fabricate the parts to build my dream car. Bespoke one of one. This is Project Mosquito. Good morning. Good morning. In last week's video, I said that we were going to do the center tunnel in this video because we need to rebuild our center console. And you pointed out that it's perhaps not the best thing to do yet, is it? No. What I think what we really need to do is get the bodywork to fit because there's an awful lot of things to do inside here and obviously we don't want to do it and find out the bodywork fouls you know, yeah. the front clamshell and the same at the back so if we get the bodywork so we can lift it on and off constantly to just give it a reference so we can see exactly where we are and obviously because the wheel the car is the same length bumper to bumper but the wheelbase is significantly bigger the body doesn't fit that's dad's way of saying the body no longer fits in oh. like a big way <laughs> <laughs> so what we have to do is we'll put the centre tunnel in anyway yeah um because it looks nice and we'll put the outer sills on and that'll help us get the body lined up and then we'll make the body line up and while we're at it i'd very much like to cut all of the steel out of that front end because if you don't know new viewers um that's actually the body of this isn't a sand rail <laughs> Um, lots of people on Reddit thought it were a sandrail. Right, this car has a body. Um, this this car is, is part of GTM. But it's currently naked. Yes. Um, so that's the front end. And it's got a lot of steel in the front end. And it's also got the world's most fearful expression of a car. I'm scared to death. Which, considering its past of being crashed multiple times and set on fire, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, it's somewhat appropriate. However, it's not appropriate for a mozzie. So I think it's time we give it a new facial expression, yep. even if it's just, like, better for now, and make the body fit. Yep. What do you think? Yep, good idea. So, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so we better get cracking, eh? Yep. Here we go. Um... I don't think that fits. It will. Right, so this is a new addition. If you watch these last few videos, this piece of box section is a new addition and it's slightly taller than the rest. And uh, the tunnel no longer fits. So I think we need a notch. Pay no attention to the centre tunnel notch either because we're going to redo it. Dad's not really happy with it. I'm not really happy with it. It's a little bit unrefined and uh, we can do better, to be honest. And as a bonus, I've had the bucket seat out and I've done a lot of measurements and we can put the seat in an even better position than we thought we could. So we've actually gained some room even more than we thought we'd gained. Uh, now it's all sat on its wheels and it's not on a table and stuff which is superb. So yeah, pay no attention to that. We're gonna redo it in the future, in a future episode. It, it shall be lighter, it shall be more refined, and it shall be prettier.
Okay. This is gonna fit like sunglasses on a pig, but we know this. <laughs> We've done that thing where we pull it too far forward, I think. Ah, good, good. Ah, you've gone down too far. Too fast, too fast, too fast. Uh, no, you're too far this way. There we go. Aha. It kind of looks like it fits from a distance if you squint, but when you come round here, there's a, there's a gap you could lose a dog through, and there's a bit of a gap there. Well, it fit, I say. Well, when you're talking paddle fit, I think an inch is a bit much. 20, that's a, 25 mil. That's even excessive for Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, that's, we're gonna need arches, we know. <laughs> um, we knew that before but this is the first time the body's been on with all four wheels, all four wheels though. I mean, we, haven't, we haven't done a practice run of this this is it yeah. this is actual first time this body's gone on with all four, all four wheels on and it has to come off again in a second but we're going to have to cut the arch off the back here uh, we want to try and keep as much of the body as possible because when we come to make our wheel arches that'll make our life a lot easier because it'll support wheel arches as we make them yeah um but i think in a wheel well is rubbing in a wheel well is rubbing so in a wheel wells have to come out here yep. here so in a wheel wells have to go because they're in wheels where wheel wells used to be and this is gonna have to go into <laughs> Yeah, keep this bit at the front for now yep. and, and just bring it up and round. All right, so we take out 15 centimeters. Ring from, from the top of the tire. If this was a Lotus, this fiberglass would be incredibly thin. But it's a GTM. So it's not. <laughs> that was oddly satisfying. Oh, we're on the extension. You going the long way around? Yep. Try not to step on the low window frame. Ugh. It fits kinda. Magni's lifting up. Yeah, it catches, remember, on the top of the door frames. One of our concerns with sorting out our Ackerman angle was that we had to move our front wheels slightly further forward. And now what we have to do is hope 
that they don't hit the back of the headlight. I don't think they will. I'm pretty sure they won't. We can always move the headlights slightly forward. <laughs> It's for weight balance, we've got to move the headlights forward. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it hits everything. I think we can open up the inner wing along the same line as we have already cut it yeah. all the way forward, yeah? Yep. And that, that'll, uh, that'll sort that out. Pretty much that on both sides. That's knackering, that is. So I'm going to try and use the doors to square up the body a bit because it's all a bit floppy and I don't have the window frame on this one. But if it looks like the doors don't fit properly, they didn't fit that well from new. So in fact, GTM doors are famous for not fitting well. I don't know why, but it just seems to work that way. But uh, the doors have a load of steel in them and they've got these horrible steel window frames which are as heavy as they look <laughs> because a GTM uses its own windscreen <laughs> a GTM uses its own windscreen uh, but it uses the side windows from a Mark 1 Mini so it has sliding um, Door windows. Amazingly, it doesn't actually look that much worse than when we bought it. And we've just cut big holes in it, so. <laughs> but you can see like how much we've moved the front wheelbase forward. Oh, it's so tiny. It gives some idea how actually how small it is. I'm six foot two. Yeah. And it's like waist height. Waist height. Ooh, my peg's popped off again. <sighs> Ow, that's sharp. Stabbing glass. Um, we might need to chop a bit more off. So, all we're doing now, obviously, it's not bodywork, it's basically for just the clearance. And body work comes up much later. Now, this car requires a colossal amount of body work. It's silly little things, not just not just big things like arches, but silly little things like spider cracks in, in the fiberglass. Um, there's, I mean, this bonnet has actually been painted with latex house paint. So it's difficult to know if there's spider cracks in it or not, but the entire body needs sanding back and like more resin applied and, and yeah, sorting whole, out properly. The whole thing is super dry. Well, that's the problem with fiberglass cars. If you leave them in, if you leave somewhere hot and you leave them outside, all over time the the resin becomes drier and drier and drier, and then it starts to delaminate, and you get surf, little surface cracks everywhere. But it is cathartic to see the body on. After all, it, this is the first time we've had it rolling. And we just wanted to, we wanted to see it with the body on, wanted to see it as a car. I like seeing it with its body on. Although it is a bit terrified looking still. We need to sort that out. <laughs> While we're at this, it's a good idea if we take the springs off our suspension, 
drop it like it's hot, and then make sure we have tire clearance at full compression. So that's what we're going to do now. What are we chopping bits off? Let's chop loads off. Because um, obviously, like that is not full compression. Or it might be, I don't know. So what we're gonna do is we'll take our springs out of our coilovers, because it's the fastest way of doing it, and, uh, and drop it on the floor and go all like Stan's Nation on it. And, uh, <laughs> and clearance it all. And then we'll have massive big cutouts like this probably, but we'll see. You never know till you try. <laughs> Get rid of this block of wood here. Those are nice steering rack mounts. Come on. Come on. <laughs> there we go. So in theory, now, when we drop the car onto its bump stops with absolutely no springs in the coilovers, the car won't bottom out in any sort of fashion. Which, we know it won't in theory, but you know what they say about theory? In theory, theory is brilliant. In practice, sometimes it ain't. Turn that back up again. Pull the, pull the wood out, yeah? Did it hit, sir? No, it was a 30 mil. Hey! Yeah, the, it may have knocked the body off, though. <laughs> There's a big gap here. <laughs> they fit the board. Yeah? yeah. Where? Where? The diff. The diff. Oof. Anything leaking, is it? I hope it cracked it. I think I may see oil. Eh? I think I can see oil. Funnily enough, someone asked me the other day on um, Facebook, I think it was, about K-series engines being so tall and why nobody leans them back. <laughs> <laughs> um, the diff hits. So the, none of the chassis touches, but the diff has touched. And if I can get a kit mat, where's, is there a kit mat on your side somewhere? No. There's a bit of oil. We don't think the diff has cracked. I panicked. Um, I think that's from the leak, the previous leak. I think I've, I thought I fixed it, but I'm almost not off. Yeah, there's a little tiny bit of oil. I thought I'd crack the diff for a moment there, but I think the shaft um, leak that we had when we first put the engine in, in that episode, I thought I'd fixed it. And I think it might need a new seal. So the next video might be lowering suspension <laughs> suspension mounts. We were going to make them height adjustable originally. And then we went, no, it's perfect, we've got it. <laughs> well, there we go. Just stand it vertically. Oh. 
What the hell? I assumed it was balsa wood. Oh, let's get that out. That can come out right now. I assumed that that was a piece of balsa wood because that's what you'd do. Not a bit of gate post. <laughs> Is it? Curse you inch box! Curse you! <laughs> oh, flipping heck. Well, there's a bit of weight that we can remove. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's not so bad, that. And as cool as it looks right now, the headlights are illegally low and it would never get off our driveway. <laughs> um, so it does look cool, but I will. That, that, look how low it is, it's tiny. Um, and the headlights and the, the front tires rubbing on the headlight backs are a problem. Well, that's why we found out this, the Stratos has pop up headlights. Yeah. We've just had lunch, and I walked into the house, and I said to Dad, oh, that's why a Stratos has pop-up headlights. Of course it is, because a Stratos has 15-inch wheels. And what they did was, excuse me, Dad, they brought, see how our front end curves inwards? Well, a Stratos doesn't. A Stratos goes straight across like this, and a Stratos headlights are here, and they hinge down. Of course they do, and that keeps the headlights away from the front wheels at full compression. Oh, genius. We can't do pop-ups, I don't think. Um, I don't like them anyway. I know you don't like them anyway. It, it's really aerodynamic sometimes. Yeah, that's why. It's right, can we rip all this steel out the front of this clamshell now? Yeah. Because it's something that I've wanted to do since the moment we got it. It's time to rip the steel out the front end and put a smile on its face. Because our little mosquito looks terrified, and after what happened, what's happened today, I don't, uh, I don't blame it. So, there's a big piece of steel here. Well, there's what used to be steel. All this bit and this bit's rust, from what I can tell. Um, but it's what is that? Three mil? Yep. It's very thick. Three mil steel, and it's all got to go. It's not a very good idea to have all you, all of this weight all hanging off the hinge at the front. It just, it's a big long lever. Anyway, so we're gonna do it better and let's get rid of this rust. There you go. That's better, it's lighter. It's not just this bit that has steel in it. The doors also have big sheets of steel in. It, we're going to get rid of a few kilos just by getting rid of all the steel and... The drill and the rust. Yeah. <sighs> Wish I had a different colour pen. <laughs> How was that? Better? That's better, yeah. What? Well, it looks like a three-year-old that's been eating a jam butter because of all, all the red. <laughs> I think we need to try making that out of card. Should I get a piece of dark coloured card? Black or something. Up. 
Now, this isn't necessarily a permanent smile because, of course, all of this has to be sorted out later again because it's a mess. How's that? I think first things first, we need a tiny hole saw so that we get this radius correct. Do you think? Uh, yeah. A teeny tiny hole saw. Was it? I, th I think it was this one. No, they're not. They're all slightly different. It was that one. This one. Can we an arbor though? To fit it. Yeah, start one. That one. There's it goes, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Oh, earlier in the episode, we were talking about spider cracks. That is a perfect example of a spider crack. Right there. We should be wearing a mask as well. Mm -hmm. Don't don't do this. It's gone from looking like Ed Von Mooks the Scream to looking like me after way too many cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah. It's hot. Well, I, I, I'm happy, it's happy. Are you happy? Good. All of the excess car. Well, Dad, it's been a weird one this week. Yes, it's been a super weird. All, all we've done really is get the grinder out and the jigsaw and ju chuck uh, bits of fiberglass in the bin. Yeah. But a couple of weeks ago, I did say, you know, in this we come in this workshop every single week and try and make as little car as possible. And this week, we, I think we've truly succeeded in that. But I do think it looks better, oddly. Yeah. Um, not having the superfluous arches, not having an arch and an arch and all yeah. that. I'm, um, I'm not going to tell you how we did the body, or how we did the body, how we're going to do the body. I'm not going to show you a picture, not going to nothing. You're just going to have to wait and find out. But I'm really happy with the smile. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, because it looked terrified before. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as far as the diff hitting the ground when, at full compression, at least now we know that nothing was damaged. And next week we can extend our suspension uh, shock mounts and, and that'll be it yeah. all happy all happy again yeah literally yeah. Um, and then the week after that we can get on the off center tunnel and center console which is a, a necessary thing for safety and uh, but then again so is your diff not hitting the ground <laughs> it's never ideal no it's suboptimal um, so thank you all for watching um, if you'd like to see more, there will be a mosquito playlist. That is a list of every single mosquito video that we've ever made, which is like, I don't know, 50 odd of them, because we make one a week or make as many as we can. 
because I know you like them. Um, there's a button that looks like my face that will subscribe you to this channel. The front end's falling off. And, um, if you'd like to click the bell icon, that will give you a notification. That's down by the subscribe button. And that will give you a notification every time we upload these videos. And uh, please, will you give us a comment and tell us what you think of the front end? Because I, I think really... it looks better. Or do you think the, the, like, the scared look was better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you think uh, it's, it's not an improvement? Yeah. All of this was about the height of a heater. <laughs> Well, it's nice to know now we've got uh, tire and body clearance at full at full droop at full compression. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.